Welcome ESA Explores listeners. I'm your host for today, Laura Zermühlen, and in this series, we're meeting the members of ESA's Astronaut Reserve. During the first phase of their astronaut reserve training here at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne in Germany, they are mastering key skills in spacecraft systems, robotics, scuba diving, and survival training. Our guest today is Megan Christian, an industrial chemist from the UK. She's worked in Antarctica, researches advanced materials for space, and now advises the UK Space Agency on space exploration. Let's dive into her story with ESA's Astronaut Reserve. Hi, Megan. Welcome to the ESA Explores podcast. Thank you. Very exciting to be here. My very first question to you would be, how did it feel when you were selected as part of the ESA Astronaut Reserve? Is there one word that would describe the feeling? So many feelings, uh, <laughs> but anticipation. I was wow. just excited about what was to come. Yeah. And then since then, how was your journey? How has it been? And then coming here to EAC to start the training? Really, everything has changed since I was selected. It didn't have to. So as a member of the reserve, I could I could keep my normal job and just mm -hmm. continue with that. And, you know, come in to, to the European Space Agency when we have a training or some kind of meetings or something like that. But I decided that I wanted to get more into the space sector because I'd learned so much during the selections process and I wanted to know more. So I got a job with the UK Space Agency. So I moved from Italy where I had been for nine years, moved to the UK, started a completely new job, going from research to policy wow. advice. And so that's been a, a big change. There's yeah. also been a lot of sort of outreach activities that have been amazing to do, talking to, to school kids especially. Yeah. And of course, The, the training now. Wow. Um, you already mentioned it was a complete change of um, your previous career, basically. And you have a background in engineering and chemistry. You've done some zero G flights already. So have you learned anything new since the start of the training or were there a lot of surprises or did you already know a lot of these things that you learned here? It's true that I've had quite a lot of different experiences in the past. As you said, I've, I've worked in a lab for many years doing kind of chemistry material science. I've done zero G flights for my, uh, for my research. I've also spent a year in Antarctica, but when you come and do training here, it's all kind of framed in a different way. Uh, so we, the first thing we did was the human behavior and performance training. And yes, I've experienced a lot of those things before. You know, I've certainly worked in teams before. Mm. I've been in leadership positions before, but learning about it in that way with a different group of people, that definitely teaches you new things. And then, you know, it's, it's all about bringing us all to the same level and we all have different backgrounds. So I haven't done much biology before, for example. So the biology classes were quite new to me. Yeah. Did you have... A favorite training session or lesson? There have been many. <laughs> uh, so I think that that human behavior and performance training was was a highlight for me. What do you learn? Is what do you learn during these lessons? It's uh, all based on the competencies that you need for the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. uh, these are things like teamwork and leadership and cultural awareness, situational awareness, and so it's all based around these aspects. Uh, but so kind to of bring them together, how you would live together and work together on the space station, because there are people from all different kinds of backgrounds there, right? Yeah, that's right, and you might be in different positions. You might be the commander or you might be mm. a member of the team. It, that might change. Yeah. And so how do you work in different situations and how do you communicate with different people? Because everybody have everybody has a different communication style. Yeah, yeah. You also mentioned Antarctica already. You've done a winter over there, right? Yeah, that's right. In 2019, I spent a year at Concordia Station. How was this? It was life-changing. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's a big problem part of what helped me get through the selection process because mm. it certainly gave me life experiences that I wouldn't otherwise have had. It was certainly tough. It was tough physically. We got down to minus 104 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow. Yeah. But most of all, it was tough, yeah. I guess, emotionally because yeah. you're isolated for nine months of that time with a small team, just 13 people, and you have 100 days of darkness, which plays tricks with both your mind and body. So it was challenging, but it was also an amazing experience. Mm, I can imagine. Do you have any memorable or exceptional moments here at EAC during the training? Was there anything very surprising that you wouldn't think that happens during astronaut reserve training. There was nothing in particular that surprised me, but there were a few pinch me moments that I knew were going to be pinch me moments. So for example, the first time that we got our flight suits and we got to, to try them on. And the first time I went 
diving in the neutral buoyancy facility because these are things that you know about from the outside. You know that these are associated with astronaut training. And so it was in those moments that I really thought, okay, I'm here, I'm doing this. Yeah. What excites you the most about space exploration? Space exploration for me is exciting because it's about discovery. It's about doing things we didn't know we could do in an environment that we didn't know that we could explore. I often think back to the the first space explorers, so to speak, you mm. know, Yuri Gagarin doing his first orbit of the Earth. Before that, people didn't really know if our bodies could even survive in microgravity for reasonably long periods. So can you imagine what courage that took? And uh, so that's just spine tinglingly exciting. <laughs> So you will continue your work in the space sector and also after this training block here? Yes, yes. So I, I'm going back to my role at the UK Space Agency. Mm -hmm. I'm in the exploration team and we're looking oh, wow. into, yeah. in my case, I'm looking particularly into what happens after the International Space Station is decommissioned, mm. what will be happening with the, the future commercial space stations and how we continue to do the kind of science and research we do now on the ISS, but with these future stations. Wow, that sounds really interesting. From all these places that you already travel to and that you may want to travel in the future, what is the most memorable place that you've already been to or that you would like to go in the future? I've been to a lot of really amazing places. One of the most memorable holidays that I've ever had was nine days of whitewater rafting on the Franklin, Ri Franklin River in, in Australia and Tasmania. Oh, wow. And this was, we were basically sent down the river with our rafts and there was no way out for those nine days. It's so we just kind of survival training. Exactly. <laughs> and we were just we were just camping by the side of the of the river. Uh, there were some rapids that were too big to be able to take the rafts through, so we had to portage them around. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was stunning and it was a really adventurous experience which I loved. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of places that I'd like to go I've been to the south, you know, I've been to Antarctica, yes. but I haven't yet been to the north. So I'd like to get to the Arctic. On the other side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say that Antarctica was maybe also the most challenging working environment or travel that you had? Yeah, Antarctica was, was definitely the most challenging. I think every job has its challenges. Yeah. But the thing about Antarctica is it's all kind of mixed up together. You have both the physical challenge and the mental challenge mm -hmm. and the emotional challenge. So it's it's all in there together and this kind of melting pot yeah. uh, makes it even more difficult. Would you do it again? I actually did go back to Antarctica for a, for a summer season. Mm -hmm. I didn't go for a whole year. Um, so that that kind of answers your question already. But I, I would. I would go for another yeah. year, maybe not in the same role. I'd need a new challenge. Yes. But yes. Yeah. How is it different, the summer over and the winter over? They're actually two completely different beasts. Yeah. Uh, so the summer you have up to sort of 90 people on the base, whereas mm -hmm. in the winter you only have around 13. And it's a really, really busy period. Mm -hmm. It goes from November to January, uh, beginning of February. And during that time, you have um, the PIs of the experiments, yep. the principal investigators of the experiments there. Quite often, they'll be installing new equipment or doing maintenance, doing upgrades. Uh, and so it's really, really busy. You're outside all day, every day, whereas the winter is a lot calmer mm -hmm. and more sort of repetitive in terms of activities. Yeah. How is the, the team experience for you over there and also here at EAC? So I guess... In Antarctica, as well as here, there are many different people with many different backgrounds, different cultures and languages coming together. You yourself, you lived in many different countries, you speak several languages. How is this aspect for you? Yeah, I think that's one of the best things about traveling and about working in different places is the different international communities and teams that you get to be a part of. And it's true that you don't always get along. Mm. In Antarctica, there are always some kind of tensions, yeah. but they're small and you get through them and at the end of it you come out as this wonderful bonded group yeah. uh, it, it changes you know sometimes one group will feel like a family and and you'll keep in touch with each other forever mm -hmm. others it'll just be that beautiful memory in the past that doesn't necessarily continue on but yeah. it's there yeah yeah and over here at EAC how do you find the the teamwork and the the working together over here oh it's been great it's it's been really really good so our group uh, in the training has been quite a small group mm -hmm. they've just been uh three or four of us yeah and so that meant that we've really gotten to get to know each other well no. and uh I guess particular bonding experiences have been when 
one person might have had a, a tough day and the others just say, oh, hey, come to our place. Let's have dinner together and, yeah. and talk it out. So there have been lots of lovely bonding moments like that. Nice. Thank you so much. That sounds really exciting. And I wish you all the best of luck for the next phase. And we'll see you again as well at some point, maybe. Yes, looking <laughs> forward to it. Thanks for having me. It's been fantastic to hear about all these exciting steps our members of the Astronaut Reserve are taking. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with anyone curious about space. Be sure to follow us and our Astronaut Reserve members on social media and visit isa.int for all the latest on our missions, training and behind-the-scenes updates. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with ESA Explores!